What's going on, fantasy managers? Welcome back to another episode of the Eye Test, where we simplify your process as a fantasy football manager. I'm here with Paul Orlando, but more importantly, sorry, Paul, but we have a special guest back, and that's Bobby Amendola, <laughs> back from Europe, his Europe backpacking trip. Welcome back, Bobby. How you doing? Thank you. Thank you. Very happy to be back. Missed you guys. You guys did great while I was gone, but just ready to hop right into it. Well, we're happy to have you back. And today, guys, we are doing a special episode as the draft is coming around, which means your rookie draft is getting even closer as the days go on. We're going to be going over projected first round picks in your rookie draft and if they're going to be a boom or bust player. Now, we're not doing the automatic booms that we all know, or at least that we're expecting to know, like those top quarterbacks and the top running back, B. John Robinson. We're going to be going over some of the more controversial first round picks. So we're going to be going over Anthony Richardson in this episode, Will Levis, Quentin Johnston, Zay Flowers, and Zach Charbonnet. And we're going to start off with Bob today because he's back, he's ready to go, and I know that he's been holding in his true feelings about Anthony Richardson. Take it away, Bob. Is he a boom or a bust? Well, I don't think I've really held back my opinion about him. If you watch our YouTube short that I did about him, I made a little joke, but Needless to say, I think he's a bust. Essentially, his tape just isn't good. Like, it's not good at all. The guy has never completed 60% of his passes in college. And a lot of people point to, oh, he could be fantasy relevant because of his rushing ability. And although he does have good rushing ability, you know, people will point to that LSU play. It's a very well-known highlight of him that people put on all the time. Florida was down by, like, 30 points at that point, or, like, 20-plus points. Like, it was a play that, like, basically didn't matter at all in the game. There's nothing in Anthony Richardson's game, besides maybe his character, and that doesn't involve his game, that I see, and I'm like, wow, this is going to translate to the NFL. Like, if you're just relying on him to be that outlier that exceeds all expectations, like that, I guess, like, a good comp would be Josh Allen, a guy that wasn't that good in college, but really, really exceeded expectations when he got to the NFL is now like a top three quarterback. If you're relying on that, um, the odds just aren't in your favor, and I would not be drafting him in the first round of fantasy drafts or in the NFL draft. Yeah, he certainly seems like a home run type of player here. Paul, what do you think? Is Anthony Richardson a boom or a bust? I think Bob set it up really really well i think anthony richardson is a huge bust and the two things i'll say on it is how often do we see these guys who you know are just physical talents and excel at the combine and then when they actually get to an nfl stage they suck and anthony richardson only starting 13 games at florida is very concerning we saw with trey lance most recently trey lance had did not have many starts he did not have many reps and he struggled extremely at the NFL level, and I know that he got hurt last year or whatever have you, but still, I think the eye test, Trey Lance is not passing it at the NFL level, and I kind of foresee Anthony Richardson comparing to that. So now we're going to move on to Will Levis. I think the feeling is a little bit similar to the same feeling that fantasy managers are getting about Anthony Richardson. If you're hanging out in, like, the middle to high picks in your first round, you're going to be tempted to get that quarterback, especially in super flex leagues, where they're valued much higher than any other position. Paul, if you were in like those mid to high picks in the first round, would you take Will Levis or do you think he's going to be a bust? I would take Will Levis. I'm, I'm a little undecided on him, but I'm going to lean on the side of boom here. I think really? that he is I think he's got an elite arm talent. I mean, the videos I've seen of him throwing a football is really fun to watch. He throws a really clean football. He has just enough athleticism to compete at the NFL level where he's not going to be like a statue in the pocket. He'll be able to move around a bit, extend some plays with his legs. And I just, to be very honest with you, I fell in love with his arm. I mean, the dude can make every single throw on every single part of the field and the only thing that scares me is he's not coming from a, a big time college, but how many times have we seen stud quarterbacks come out of, you know, not the SEC? So I'm going to lean on the side here that, that Will Levis, depending on if he gets a good offensive coach and, 
gets the support that he needs, I think he's going to boom in this league. Bob, what do you think? Well, this is our first disagreement because I think he's going to bust. And before I get into why, you know who he reminds me of? Who also had a great combine based on arm talent? Carson Wentz. No. Carson Wentz <laughs> actually has actually done something at the <laughs> NFL level. This guy Yeah, that's it. true. <laughs> uh, Baker but, Mayfield? No. <laughs> it's, it's Zach Wilson. That's who oh. he reminds me of. Everyone is wowed by the arm, and he has a great arm, not denying that at all. But more of how he, like, kind of carries himself, you know, posting those gym selfies. And I don't know. Just nothing about him, like, really, like, tells me this guy is a franchise quarterback. But moving on to more, like, how he plays on the field. He has the big arm, but when I watch the tape, Pocket awareness really isn't there. He doesn't have a lot of touch on his throws. It's kind of like, like, it's just a cannon, which is good, but not good when you're in the NFL because you need those touch throws. And Will Levis just really doesn't do it for me at all. But, you know, if you're at the tail end of the first round in super flex leagues, it may be worth it to take the risk because, like you said, they are worth more in super flex leagues i just personally wouldn't do it because i don't see him being that good in the nfl yeah the problem that i have with like if will levis falls to me say at like the six or the seven or the eight spot like yeah quarterbacks are so valuable but i i would probably only draft will levis or anthony richardson if i already had like a several starting quarterbacks on my team but if you're a team that has quarterback holes that you need to fill like wait till next year in 2024 draft and like stock up on those first round picks for 2024 because i just think that there are some positional players that are going to be around in that six seven eight range that you could get production out of his rookie season and we can move on to him right now this guy will certainly be available in your rookie draft in those types of picks like the six seven eight Possibly even further from more recent news, but Bob, what are your thoughts on Quentin Johnston? Guy, I feel like a hater here. We're starting out hot, and all three of these guys, this, <laughs> Quentin Johnston, I think he's a bust as well. Like, he has some really good highlight plays. You know, he has all the metrics that tell you he could be a good wide receiver in the NFL, but when you watch the tape, he plays small relative to his height. He doesn't high point the ball at all. He basically plays like he's Tyreek Hill's height, but he's just obviously not Tyreek Hill. Like, the amount of body catches this guy has on his tape is extremely concerning for me. Again, it's not like something that completely kills him, but the fact that he doesn't really high point the ball as like a 6'3", 6'4", receiver, like, I just don't see that changing at the NFL level. Maybe if he gets in, like, the perfect system maybe on like the Chiefs or something like that, who are known to have anyone excel in their system, maybe he could be a boom then. But again, if you're betting on that, I just think he's a bust at that point because one out of 32, it's not likely to happen. So Bob, you let's say you have the 1.08 in this year's draft. You got Will Levis and Quentin Johnston able to draft. <laughs> who are you taking? I'll probably go Johnston, honestly, even though I, even though quarterbacks obviously are worth more in super flex leagues, just because I was more, it's just not a good question for me, honestly, <laughs> but I'd probably just go Johnston because I think he just has more on tape. Like he was still very successful at TCU. I'm just not sure how it would translate to the NFL. Yeah. Levis, I'm just pretty out on. And quarterbacks, quarterbacks are just hard to hit. Yeah, I think I would go Johnston in that situation too, just because um, Will Levis is probably going to get drafted by a team where he's going to have to like carry that team to success. Maybe they won't have the pieces around him. But there's a chance that Quinton Johnson could fall to a team that just needs like maybe a wide receiver three slot to fill. So like he might find himself on a team with a better quarterback as opposed to Will Levis. If he goes onto a team with not that many surrounding pieces, 
he's going to look very – he's going to look even worse than what we are projecting him to be. Paul, what do you think about Quentin Johnston? Well, I think you guys can draft the heck out of Quentin Johnston. I don't care. I'll take Will Levis over him any day of the week. And for a lot of reasons that Bob said, he's a 6'3", this huge physical specimen, and he plays like he's 5'8". He plays almost scared of the ball. But the number one thing here is I watch this dude drop way too many passes for a wide receiver. If he was not 6'3", if he could not jump like he can, and he jumps very well. I think he did very well in the broad jump, and he's still only like a 50% contested catch rate when another guy we're going to be talking about right after this I think it's him. Somebody in these next two videos has a 72% catch rate, and he's much, much smaller, which is insane. And for that reason, I want a receiver, especially who's a big, you know, big, fast guy like that. You got to catch the ball for me. And the number one way for wide receivers to lose playing time and lose jobs in the NFL is if you drop passes. And so with that, with Quentin Johnson, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to consider him a bust Maybe he can go to the right place and get coached up, but the drops, man, they scare the they scare the living heck out of me. Can't can't buy into it. All right, so then let's move on to well, actually, one real quick thing that I wanted to point. I kind of alluded to it earlier, but did you guys see the most recent news about like Quentin Johnston not getting invited to the first round of the draft? I did. Yeah, I did. Dude, yeah. that's scary. That's why I'm thinking like if he falls to the second round uh, or further. I mean, if he can find himself into the middle of any round you're looking at a like playoff contending team that he could be on a team with a good quarterback so i'm a little higher on quentin johnson than you guys are but maybe that's just because i spent like 95 dollars on him in my auction league last week <laughs> well the reason that i say that i mentioned the chiefs because i did see him mock to the chiefs at 31 or 32 whatever their first round pick is and i thought hmm that's interesting. Maybe I'll change my stance, consider him a boom before I watch the tape and I thoroughly watch the tape. And I was like, this guy just isn't it. Maybe if he lands on the Chiefs, but I just I can't see it. Yeah, I mean, if it's one guy that could turn him into a boom, it's definitely Patty Mahomes. Let's go ahead and move on to Zay Flowers here. Another guy coming out of a smaller school. What do we think about Zay Flowers? Let's go to Paul here. So I... I love Zay Flowers, man. I, I really hope that the Ravens, I really hope he falls to the Ravens. I would love to see him and OBJ paired up with Rashad Bateman in there as well. That would give Zay Flowers a chance to work in the slot. But there's a lot of things to love about Zay Flowers. I think there's more things to love than there are things to dislike. And the number one thing that stands out for me with Zay Flowers is he is a threat on every level of the defense. So he can run that underneath route, catch it, make a good run, really good yards after catch opportunity there. He runs a really nice intermediate route. So when you do need those 10, 12, 14 yards on those longer plays, he's able to do that. And he's also an above average, and I'll even kind of put him at an elite deep threat. And so when you can test all three levels of the defense, it's just something that is is uh, very much necessary to succeed in the NFL. So I, I love Zay Flowers. I think he's going to boom. Yeah, I, I'm i pretty high on Zay Flowers, too, and arguably a little bit higher than I am with Quentin Johnston. What I really like about Zay Flowers, and Paul, you you made a pretty good point, is like he's kind of like your all-around wide receiver. He's averaging 14 yards a catch. So, I mean, that's not – I wouldn't call that like a deep threat, but it certainly shows with 78 catches and you're getting 1,000 yards – that that's pretty nice so he's definitely getting some long balls thrown to him and he's also getting like those intermediate catches and going for yards after the catch he's also rushing the ball too ran the ball 12 times his, his uh senior year so i like that the one thing that does concern me about zay flowers is it's not like he declared for the draft early which is a nice sign that i look for for these rookie wide receivers he played four years and he didn't really have his good year until his senior year so bob let's let's hear what you think about zay flowers here so I'm all on the Zay Flowers train. This is my first boom of our first round, and I love Zay Flowers. You know, I wouldn't put him, obviously, on the level of JSN or anything like that. But like Paul said, extremely versatile player. He could do it on all levels on offense. He kind of reminds me his game a little bit. I think Debo might be a little bit bigger, but he kind of reminds me of Debo the way his game is, except I think he... Zay Flowers excels more at, like, contested catches and downfield, whereas Debo is more, like, you know, 
can run the ball, is more intermediate and stuff like that. But their yak remind is very similar, and that's another area where Zay Flowers excels. You know, I've seen comps of Zay Flowers to like Tyreek Hill, and I think you may be getting a little carried away with that because there's only one Tyreek Hill, but he plays very similar. And watching the tape, there's not much to dislike with him. And I think most people's issues with him, like you said, John, is that he played four years. He didn't declare early. But in my opinion, that's not a reason to not draft a guy when his tape tells you that he's a very good receiver and he could pretty much do it all. For sure, yeah. And there's certainly a drop-off. It seems like with this draft, there's really, especially in the first round, there's one receiver and then the tier just, I mean, it's a pretty big drop-off. But what there is plenty of in the first round is running back. So let's talk about one of the running backs that's projected to be the number three running back off the board and projected to make it into the first round. And that's Zach Charbonnet out of UCLA. Bob, how do you take this one away for the last name of the first round? So we are ending the first round with a boom from me. Nice. I won't, I wouldn't say that Charbonnet like blew me away with the tape that I watched from him. But he looks like he has the body and the way he runs, he looks like a full, a three down back in the NFL. Kind of similar to, he reminds me of like a little bit of a bigger Nick Chubb. That's what you asked me up. And he just, he could do everything. You know, he's sneaky fast. He could catch the ball out of the backfield. He could run between the tackles. If you could get, if you're comping him to Nick Chubb, if you get Nick Chubb with some receiving upside, then you have a guy that can make an immediate impact in the NFL and in fantasy as well. So I'm all in on him. I actually like him. I might like him more than Gibbs, honestly, just because of his all-around game compared to Gibbs. And he's just bigger, and I feel like he could last longer in the NFL. Paul, close us out here. What do you think about Zach Charbonnet, boom or bust? Oh, dude, I absolutely love him. I absolutely love Zach Charbonnet. I think he's the best running back in this class, not named Bajan Robinson. I think he does so many things very, very well. Like Bob was saying, huge physical threat. He can kind of catch passes a little bit, but the thing that really stands out for me here is his vision. And it's also something that kind of hinders him as well, where he gets almost, he has like that Le'Veon Bell in his prime where Le'Veon would sit behind the line of scrimmage and just wait, 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 seize the field very well, and then boom, he's got that acceleration to hit the hole and make some big plays. Sometimes that patience does get him in trouble, though, and he does get tackled behind the line of scrimmage because he's being almost too patient, but that is a very, very easy fix at the NFL level. Any decent running back coach can kind of help him with that. So I love Zach Charbonnet. I think that whoever gets him is going to be very lucky, and if for NFL teams, if he makes it to the second or third round, they're going to be very, very happy with picking him. Nice. All right. Well, that does it, guys, for our first round projected rookies. Are they a boom or a bust? Go ahead and comment down below in the comment section who you think is going to be the biggest boom and who you think is going to be the biggest bust of your rookie first round. Go ahead over to our YouTube channel, guys. We appreciate any subscriptions that you guys make. Please like our video and share this video to your friends as you guys prepare for your rookie draft coming up. We're going to be coming back tomorrow going over the projected second round rookies and whether they are a boom or bust. Stay tuned and everyone have a great day. Peace. I'll square up with anyone who thinks Anthony Richardson's going to boom. <laughs> <laughs> Bob is Throwing back. hands, ready to go.